Good morning, everyone. <laughs> welcome. Those of you who are visiting, um, please welcome to uh, Prince of Peace. My name is Deacon Jeff Prickett. I am the uh, pastoral leader here. And Father Ryan, who you will see walking in with me, will, um, is our priest celebrant here at Prince of Peace. So we welcome you all. And uh, for those of you who are uh, regular Wednesday churchgoers, uh, yeah, this is not your typical Wednesday, is it? Um, but we welcome all of you here, and we hope that we can start your school year off in the right way with prayer and with having our best friend help us, who is Jesus. So let us pray together, worship together, and thank Jesus together as well. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our grace-wide liturgy to celebrate our new school year together. We hope you were able to find rest and peace this summer after an adventure of a school year last year. Today we start a new journey. This journey might be riddled with unknowns, fears, anxieties, and stresses as we work together to navigate global uncertainties. The key word here, though, is together. Together, we can accomplish great things to serve our students. Together, we can build bridges in our communities. Together, we can come, become more like Christ, who gathers us as one this morning to be nourished and strengthened as his brothers and sisters at the table of life. In our gospel reading this morning, we hear Jesus deliver his seven woes or condemnations to the scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus reserves his harshest comments for the very end. The last two woes had deeply offended the scribes and the Pharisees because the woes were a critique of the religious leaders' interior lives. The scribes and Pharisees looked and acted like upright and pious people, but their thoughts and, mo and motivations were misdirected. Jesus publicly accuses religious leaders of being hypocritical. He unwaveringly spoke truth to power structures of his day. As we gather together today, let us reflect on our own actions and our own motivations behind these actions. In our daily lives with others, let us be the face of Christ in both our thoughts and in our actions. Together 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Greetings and welcome to Prince of Peace. I'm Father Dennis Ryan. This is Deacon Jeff Pritchick. Um, I am one of those odd priests that is retired, but working harder than if I had a full-time job. <laughs> and that's kind of true. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm here full-time, um, at least for sacramental ministry, and then I'm involved in different things. As we gather this day, we come to remember St. Louis. And Deacon Jeff will share some things about him. He was a king and a father and very involved in the world as a Christian. So as we gather, let us call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who brought St. Louis from the cares of earthly rule to the glory of a heavenly realm, grant, we pray, that through his intercession we may seek out your eternal kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you. We proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and so is God. How devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behave towards you believers. As you know, we treated each one of you as a father treats his children, exhorting and encouraging you and insisting that you walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you receive it not as the word of men, but as it truly is the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord. Our response will be, you have searched me and you know me, Lord. Where can I go from your spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sink to the netherworld, you are present there. You have searched me and you know me, Lord. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me and your right hand hold me fast. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord. If I say, surely the darkness shall hide me, and night shall be my light, for your darkness itself is not dark, and night shines as the day. You have searched me, and you know me, Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of filth. Even so, on the outside you appear righteous, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the memorials of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would have not have joined them in shedding the prophets' blood. Thus you bear witness against yourselves that you are the children of those who murdered the prophets. Now fill up what your ancestors measured out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That gospel we just heard, um, I don't think is the good way, is the best way to start a school year. Um, so we won't go into that message a whole lot. But I'd like to talk about the saint that we are honoring today, who is St. Louis. Depending on the sources that I have read, um, he either died at the age of 44 or at the age of 57. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but uh, he was uh, fighting in a war in the, one of the Crusades when he passed away. But I think what's more important about this man is first of all, his father died when he was 12, and he was made king immediately. Now, his mother helped him because he was 12 years old. But when he was 19, he married a 12-year-old girl. And together, they had 11 children. He uh, listened to his father before his father passed away, he gave him words of wisdom, and he carried those with him. One was to make sure that God was first in everything in his life. And then he needed to demonstrate that. So as royalty, he could have done whatever he wanted. He could have had servants everywhere, taking care of him every moment. But he chose to serve the poor. Every day, he had 13 people who came into the palace who were poor, and he served them meals, and there were lots more who were on the outside who he, who he took care of as well, every day. That was the mark of someone who had God first in his life. That is the mark of someone who says that it doesn't matter where my position is in life, I'm here to serve others. That is the message for all of us today. No matter where we are in our life, we are here to serve others and to serve each other. And how hard is that? It's much easier for us to be served than to serve In the uh, Office of Readings in the Liturgy of the Hours, St. Louis writes a letter to his son. Now, I don't know. He had 11 children, so I'm not quite sure which one he wrote this to. But I'd just like to share with you a few things that he said. My dear son, my first instruction is that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength. Without this, there is no salvation. He goes on to say, If the Lord bestows upon you any kind of prosperity, thank him humbly and see that you become no worse for it, either through vain pride or anything else.
Finally, he says, and this is how he lived his life, be kind-hearted to the poor, the unfortunate, and the afflicted. Give them as much help and consolation as you can. Thank God for all the benefits he has bestowed upon you, that you may be worthy to receive greater. The gospel message that Jesus gave to the Pharisees this morning was extremely stern. The message that St. Louis leaves us by his legacy is just the reverse. It is about love and about caring for each other. That's what we are here to do. May we now present our intentions to the Lord our God, asking for his continual presence in our lives. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will faithfully tend to the word of God, listening ever more closely for God's callings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will strive tirelessly for peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are lonely will find solace in loving, attentive relationships. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all gathered here will know God's promised presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our administrators, teachers, aides, administrative assistants, custodians, and all school staff members that God will give them the wisdom, courage, and strength to do their work with great joy this year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May eternal rest be granted unto Frank Radosevic, our Mass intention for today. May his soul and the souls of all faithful departed rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own needs and intentions that we now recall in our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious Lord, you place your word into our hearts and you invite us to follow that word each and every day. Help us to be molded in grace and share your love and mercy with one another. We ask our prayer through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifices we offer to your majesty, Lord, on this feast day of blessed Louis, be effective for our salvation and pleasing to you in your loving kindness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as with <coughs> excuse me, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, especially St. Louis, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
All right, we didn't think through communion very well here, so here's what we're going to do. Father and I are going to come down to these sides here, and we'll take the middle sections first. So if you can come down this way to the middle, to the side, and then go back through the middle, and then we'll um, take those sides as well. So if you come, if you start on this side and come back around, you can do that. And I will get you two first. How's that? So that you can... There we go. All right. Got that worked out. The body.
Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly implore you, Lord, that the homage of dutiful service, which we render on the feast day of Blessed Louis, may bring us an increase of your saving grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, once again, I want to thank all of you from Grace to, for being here today, and uh, we're, we hope you enjoy your time here. Thanks, guys. Uh, considering you've never been up here before, you did really, really well. It's good. <laughs> I think that all the staff of Grace is staying in here after Mass, so you will be in here. And then Prince of Peace people, yes, you have breakfast today. So uh, if you smell something, I'm sorry, but uh, that's, that's kind of the way it is today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Stop.